Welcome Investor Holics to another video. Today we'll be checking out uh, the S&P ASX 200-300 indexes, the best for 2020 and beyond. Stick around, uh, I think this video will be very interesting uh, for those who are looking for a broad-based index to include in their portfolio. Hey there Investor Holics, this is Scott. Crack the Sky Value Investing will be giving you up-to-date investing news and content so you can navigate other markets wherever you are. My mission is to give you the knowledge and confidence to take control of your personal finances. Hey, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe because it helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Expand your investment horizon and crack your financial sky. Okay, let's kick off with A200, and that is the BetaShares Australia 200 ETF. Market capitalization of just under $243 million. Fund manager is beta shares, obviously. A200 has the lowest uh, management fee of any of the ETFs we'll look at today at 0.07% per annum. This means that you will be charged 70 cents per year for every $1,000 you have invested. Okay, investment objective. A200 tracks performance of the Selective Australia 200 index. Obviously, before fees and expenses, uh, provides exposure to the largest 200 companies listed on the ASX based on their market capitalization. Top five holdings uh, for A200 uh, CSL, Commonwealth Bank, BHP, uh, Westpac, and National. Um, they're all pretty standard, and you can see the same uh, major holdings for all four ETFs. So as we've already touched on, A200 provides exposure to the largest 200 companies listed on the ASX based on their market capitalization. A200's diversification should make a good investment over the long term as long as the investor is patient, as we always should be, especially for long-term investing. Okay, let's have a look at a quick summary here. We've got a price of $96.19, PE of 19.8. One seven dividend yield of 4.2%, 12 month performance of negative 6.85%. Uh, performance since inception looking at 1.37%. Uh, Morningstar give it a bronze rating. So, just something to note here the PE is a little higher than the other three ETFs that we will look at. Uh, also, uh, performance since inception, we, this one's only been running for just over two years. It was um, come onto the boards on the 7th of May 2018. Um, so that's why you're really only looking at a 1.37% gain because everything's been wiped out uh, in the recent COVID crash. Okay, so second on the list here is IOZ, which is the iShares Core S&P ASX 200 ETF. Market cap of $2.2 billion, um, fund managers iShares, which is BlackRock. So IOZ has a very low management fee of 0.09%, so 0.02% um, higher per annum than uh, A200. Uh, so that means, you know, for every $1,000 you have invested, you'll be uh, charged $0.90 cents per year. So the fund aims to provide investors with the performance of the S&P ASX 200 accumulation index before fees and charges. Uh, this index is designed to measure the performance of the uh, 200 largest securities held in the ASX. So top five holdings for IOZ, uh, no surprise because it's um, market cap weighted. So you can CSL, Commonwealth Bank, BHP, Westpac, and, and National Australia Bank. So with one trade, you can get access to the 200 largest companies listed on the ASX based on their market cap. You know, IOZ is a pretty cheap and efficient uh, way to get access to um, a very, very broad diversified uh, basket of uh, 200 shares all in one trade. Okay, let's quickly run over some additional points here. Uh, price was about $23.77, PE of 16.87, yield of 4.69%, uh, 12-month performance of negative 6.77, 
Since inception, you're looking at performance of 6.47% per annum, and Morningstar also gives this a rating of bronze. So up next here is STW, which is the State Street Spider S&P ASX 200 fund, market cap of $3.7 billion, uh, managed by State Street Global Advisors. Management fees pretty low, not as low as the two we've already looked at, at uh, 0.13% per annum. So that means for every $1,000 you have invested, you're going to get charged $1.30 per year. Okay, so investment objective of... Uh, STW uh, seeks to closely match before fees and expenses return of the S&P ASX 200 index. This approach is designed to provide portfolio with low uh, turnover, accurate tracking and lower costs. So yeah, top five holdings uh, for STW are the five usual suspects with CSL, Combank, BHP, Westpac, and National Australia Bank making up the top five. No surprises here. Uh, so STW provides expert management, uh, low-cost access to diversified portfolio of Australian equities in one tradable security. So one trade, you've got your 200 companies, uh, same as all these ones we look at here, uh, making it uh, a pretty good option uh, for investors and use these ones sort of as a core of your portfolio anyway. So a summary here, the price of $58.08, PE of 16.99, dividend yield is the best of the four ETFs we're reviewing today at 4.99% uh, when I checked today, 12 month performance of negative 6.78%, Performance since inception, you're looking at 7.14% per annum, and Morningstar gives this a bronze rating as well. Okay, let's have a look at the um, final of our four ETFs here, which is VAS Vanguard Australia Shares ETF, market cap of $5.3 billion, uh, definitely the largest of all four of the uh, ETFs. The fund manages Vanguard, obviously. Pretty low management fee here, 0.1% per annum. So that means for every thousand dollars you have invested, you get charged one dollar per year. So VAS seeks to track the returns of the S and P ASX 300 index before taking into account fees and expenses and other taxes. So this is a broader based ETF. Um, the other three we've looked at are ASX 200. So this is ASX 300. So you got an additional one hundred um, companies included in this ETF. So even though this ETF tracks the ASX 300, you're still looking at the same top five holdings here with CSL, Commonwealth Bank, BHP, Westpac, and um, ANZ, and that's pretty much due to the fact that it, uh, it's market cap weighted as well. So that's why you're going to see the same um, companies in the top five. VAS, uh, one of the main features here is uh, low uh, market spread. Uh, typically around 10 basis points. VS is a very good option to gain broad exposure to Australian equities from the shop that specialises in passive investing, which is Vanguard. Okay, just a quick summary of some additional points here. Price uh, today when I did the research was $73.17, PE of 16.54, dividend yield of 4.8. 4.9%, 12 month performance, uh, looking at minus 6.48%. Uh, performance since inception is 8% uh, per annum, and Morningstar give it a bronze rating as well. VS includes an additional 100 companies, and they're, they're a smaller company, so in theory, you should get uh, more growth from those companies, and that actually should actually push up your performance over time. So that's another reason why people are interested in VAS. So I feel that these ETFs are all very similar. Uh, over the long term, you're going to get similar returns from them. If you're looking for the best dividend, uh, I look at STW. 
Um, if you're looking at the best historical returns, thinking that that might be uh, something that actually happens in the future, I look at VAS for that very reason because you've got the um, additional companies, the small companies to help returns over time. I thought it would be interesting to see where the broader market's been investing. Uh, so VAS has had $1.28 billion invested in it. Uh, year to date, uh, IOZ's had just over 500 million and STW's had just over 400 million. So, you know, looking at those numbers, um, people are definitely preferring VAS to the other three. You know, VAS has had the best performance, historically speaking, uh, and STW has the best dividend, historically speaking, and, and A200, which isn't on this list because it's not traded as much is the cheapest. So I personally own A200. And the m main reason I did that was because of the, the fees. It's the cheapest and the historically that should actually help you um, with your investment returns over time. Hey there, Investor Alex, this is Scott. Crack the Sky Value Investing will be giving you up-to-date investing news and content so you can navigate the markets wherever you are. My mission is to give you the knowledge and confidence to take control of your personal finances. Hey, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe because it helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Expand your investment horizon and crack your financial sky.